Hey there, I just wanted to do a quick video discussing some of the logic that you might end up using in Twine if you're using Twine to tell some of your online stories. Uh, to do that, I created a quick game um, type thing. I've called it a central logic experiment because the point of the game in this instance would be that there is one point that all decisions come from and lead off from and the reason you would do something like this is if you had a kind of game where uh, you had say a health bar and the health bar that you had diminished as you made certain decisions or took certain actions and that that determined the outcome of your story more than say decisions that you were making in a kind of linear narrative fashion so to get started, let's just look at the, the story and see how it progresses. It's very, very simple. I haven't put any graphics or anything in it just now because it's all about the logic here. Uh, if we start the story, there's this empty passage, and I'll explain that in just a second. But if you start off, you have got a list of choices. You've got four choices. And for now, let's just choose uh, A four times. Okay. So, so once you've choo chosen uh, A four times, you get this message saying that you've done everything, and if you try to go back, it keeps telling you that you've, you've done everything, okay? Um, so that's not a great loop, really. Um, really, it should, instead of looping back to the central logic, once you've done everything, it it's actually sh should uh, loop back to the first passage, and then it would reset everything. But um, yeah, actually, why don't I go ahead and do that now? Uh, go back. And instead of going to the central logic, we'll go back to first passage. Yeah, that works better. Um, but the point of all of this is to really try and discuss Twine's inbuilt video game logic and how you can use that to try and tell some more interesting stories so that it's not always just, you know, choice A or choice B and that takes you on different paths. This way you can have kind of more interesting spider web shaped stories uh, that are a little bit more intricate and I think a little bit more similar to uh, the video games that we know, love and, and play. Um, so to describe things a little bit more in a little bit more detail, uh, I want to look at this first passage that we have here. And the first passage looks like it's empty. It kind of is empty. Um, but the point of it really is to set this key variable that we have, which is called time. Um, time in this instance is what's being diminished as you, you make any of your actions here. Now, I've done this in the simplest way possible, and there's some things here that you don't really need, but I've explained it very, very simply by saying this passage is really here just to set up variables, and then if you're also interested in using things like video, um, or sometimes sound, some browsers that you use need users to engage with a passage first before it'll then autoplay in subsequent passages. So sometimes it's good just to have a, a kind of a landing screen or a splash screen where you can set key variables and things like that before really beginning your story. Uh, so here I've used the set macro, so you know, open brackets set. And if you start typing that, Twine will actually prompt you to, to finish writing that. So I've done set and then gone ahead and set my variable time here and set it to eight. OK, um, so basically what this passage does is it sets the variable and then it gives me one option, which is to start, which leads to the central logic. So if I go ahead and minimize this again, show you where that goes. So that means that first passage takes me to the central point where all the other points are connected to. And from that point on, it's all about the decisions that I make to progress the story. All right. So looking into the logic of the central logic passage, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Um, so here we can see that there is an initial if statement. And this if statement says, if time is zero, then we go to choice E. But what's interesting about this is the syntax of how this is actually written here. So you'll notice it is if in brackets as normal, but then after it says the variable time is zero, then you open a hook. Okay, so you open a hook right next to those brackets. And essentially what that's saying to Twine is that if the conditions within the brackets are met, 
then whatever is within the hook should be executed. But it'll only be executed once that first condition is met. Here we're going to use the goTo macro. And goTo takes what's called a string variable, which just means any text within commas is sort of normal speech, I guess. And it says goTo choice E. Now, something that's, I think, kind of interesting is when you use the goTo um, macro, it doesn't give you that arrow like you would probably usually expect to see um, in your twinery page. So you kind of have to start taking note of these things yourself a little bit more because twine isn't going to point out exactly where things are going. But if we essentially here have run out of time, if time is equal to zero, then the central logic will always take us to choice E. Okay. Now, to make this kind of interesting, what I've done is said anytime you click one of the other choices, time should be reduced by two. How have I done that? Well, instead of using a standard uh, hook link combination thing, which would be, you know, your average choice A, which would take us to choice A if we clicked on it, instead of using that, I've used the link macro. And here I've said link choice A, so it's kind of the same thing. And then I have the uh, the other macros within a hook, so they're only executed if this particular link is what's clicked. So if you click choice A, time is set to itself, minus two. It's kind of annoying syntax, uh, especially coming from other programming languages. I <laughs> really hate this. Um, but yeah, set time to it minus two, and then go to choice A. And then we've got the same option for choice B, C, and D. Now, to make this slightly more interesting, we could, of course, make it so that some choices are better than others. We could make it so that whatever choice A is um, doesn't take away our time as much as something like choice D. So, I don't know, maybe we could have choice A, B, uh, go to the gym. I don't know about you, I kind of hate going to the gym, and I know that if I go to the gym, it definitely feels like it takes an accurate amount of time. Uh, if I'm there for an hour, it definitely feels like an hour. By comparison, though, we could say something like, oh, do some twine programming. And again, I don't know about you, but I know that if I get lost in a little uh, molehill of trying to figure out something on Twine, um, it can take me forever to, uh, to kind of snap out of it. Now, as I said, when we're using the, um, the, the, the go-tos, uh, it doesn't always tell you exactly where things are going to end up in your twinery main screen, but these should still work because we've created a link that says go to the gym, but then the go to goes to choice A. So we still have our choice A, uh, choice D things here, but if we uh, play the story again, we'll see that the choices have been replaced in terms of what the player sees, but um, it doesn't actually change the underlying logic very much. Now, We've said that doing some twine programming takes up four hours of our time, so theoretically we should only be able to click this twice, and then I've done everything I can. All right, so if I uh, start the game again, then I should be able to click this eight times. And then I've done everything. Okay, cool. So that's just a tiny insight into the kinds of things that you can do with uh, logic inside Twine. I'm going to make this HTML file available. So if you want to, you can load it up in your own Twinery and have a look at the code that I was using. Um, but the main thing to pay attention to really is just setting up variables and then making sure that you use the right macros um, with hooks in the right places in order to execute the, the macros themselves. A quick note would be to say that 
When I'm using variables here, I've used a global variable for almost everything. Um, that's not great practice, and it can cause errors, certain errors, and particularly in certain different browsers. Um, but the alternative of using variables with a limited scope, using things like that, um, is a little bit more challenging, particularly when you're just starting out. So for now, we'll just stick with these global variables, but just know that as things get a little bit more complicated, you'll probably want to move on to something uh, with a little bit more of a restricted scope. Okay, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And if there's another thing from Twine that you'd like to see, let me know in the comments and I'll build it for you.